all eyes are on the economy and financial turmoil now to know where the housing market is headed for the rest of 2023. The bank troubles seem not entirely contained, and, and that has to have impact on consumer confidence to buy homes. At Altos Research, we're not, we're not forecasters of the economy. We measure the housing market. So I don't have a broad a view of, of how broad the, the impact of things like bank failures might be, but it sure looks like it has the potential to be very disruptive. Up until now, housing demand in 2023 has been surprisingly robust. Home prices fell across the country late last year, and, and so they're, they're down year over year, but they haven't continued to show continued declines in the new year with tight inventory and reasonably strong demand. So while you'll start seeing headlines of home price declines, year over year home price declines coming very soon, these changes are actually behind us. Uh, and the data as of right now hasn't shown home prices declining further yet. But big scary recessions, job losses, or, or things like bank failures could slow buyers abruptly. And there's some signs of maybe we're seeing that already, and I'll, I'll show you those today. Every week, of course, Altos Research tracks every home for sale in the country. We analyze all the pricing, all the supply and demand, all the changes in that data, uh, and we make it available to you before you see it in the traditional channels. The data we cover here in these videos is national in scope, but, but is available from Altos for every zip code in the US. If you need to communicate with buyers and sellers right now, there is a link in the description below to join us and dive in. I'm Mike Simonson. I'm the founder of Altos Research. Let's look at the data as of March 20th, 2023. Inventory looks to be bottoming. Turning the corner finally uh, to start having more selection for the spring. There, there are 414,000 single family homes on the market this week. That's up a tiny fraction from last week. So finally an inventory increase uh, for the spring market. The, the, I've included this uh, yearly view of inventory trends this, this week here. Uh, each line is a year in this chart. You can see how inventory starts the year low and then climbs to peak later in the summer. The dark red line is this year. There are 67% more homes on the market now than last year at this time. Uh, last year, inventory started climbing uh, very quickly in the second quarter as the brakes hit from, from that record hot start of 2022. So it was really May, June, July that we could see inventory climbing so quickly. And you can see that how that's illustrated here. Up to this point, we've been surprised at how robust the, the market has been. Very few new listings each week and more buyers, so inventory has been declining. And I think we're about to learn how abruptly the market can change again. So in February, mortgage rates were around 6% and, and people were buying homes, more homes than expected. In recent weeks, rates jumped over 7% and that's definitely slowed things down. Rates declined last week in response to the bank failures, but it's hard to imagine how bank failures don't add to our fears, which make buyers more reluctant. So uh, it looks to me like the signals that are that, that buyers will be slowing back down a bit uh, after this first surprising 10 weeks of the year. The year over year inventory chart is useful to, to show whether we can get back to pre-pandemic normal levels of supply anytime soon. Uh, or whether the selection will, will stay this severely limited for buyers. My guess though, is that even as buyers slow, our sellers remain slow also. Uh, we, we have 67% more homes on the market now than, than last year at this time. Uh, last year, the, the light red line there. But by later this, later this summer, that increase looks to be like it'll be much tighter. So like I said, our models don't predict the economy. Uh, though it seems like there's some real risk. Uh, you know, more bank failures, more job losses, like these risks are real. And uh, like last year, we'll be able to see how quickly the supply chart changes by watching this view. 
The median uh, single family home price in the U.S. is $429,900. That's, that's up a fraction from last week, which is normal for this time of year. Weekly price changes, um, though, uh, are significantly slower than last year. So you can see how the, the, the next few months of media headlines will be reporting home price declines from last year, the, the, the dark red line, the slope at the right end of the chart here is, is aiming much lower than last year's peak. The median price of the new listings that's, is $400,000. That's, that's already flat from last year, meaning the homes being listed now are at the same price as they were hitting the market last year. Um, there's obviously not enough demand in the market to push prices higher from here. The, the light red line here you can see is moving sideways at the right end. Uh, when normally the price of the new listings pushes higher each week in Q1. So again, this shows us why the headlines in the coming weeks are going to start showing year-over-year -year price declines. Houses get listed now at the prices that the, the sellers and listing agents think they're going to get, they expect from buyers. So these are sales that are going to happen in the future. The, uh, the pending sales numbers are just barely inching up each week. The pendings are really the fastest proxy for sales. So these are the homes that go into contract where they spend a month or two before the sales close. Uh, there are 329,000 single family homes in contract right now. Uh, and uh, that's 21% fewer than last year at this time. So, so we had, we had the big dip in the newly in, we had we had a big dip in the newly pendings uh this week um with only forty seven thousand single family homes going into contract so that's 33 percent fewer than last year at this time so is that a one week anomaly maybe it's a signal of of consumers feeling the, the financial market turmoil and and you know mortgage rates closer to seven percent so it's one week don't read too much into it um but it's definitely something to keep an eye on. In this chart, each bar counts total pendings in that week. The right end of the chart you can see is up 2% week over week, but the light portion of the bar, the new pendings, is, is much smaller this week. Again, it makes sense to keep our eyes on this chart because you know the, the, to, to see how, how fast the homes are going into contract, how fast things are selling. The economy has been remarkably strong, but there are cracks showing. If a recession hits hard, then uh, home buyers will definitely slow more. And we'll see it here in this pendings chart very quickly. So the, this week looks slower, but it's one week. So, so keep uh, watching here. The price of the pendings is going to be really interesting to watch over the next few weeks. When we track the pendings properties, we can, we can watch the price range that people are buying one to two months before the sales actually complete. The, this week, the median price of the homes pending contract is $375,000, which is unchanged from last year. You can see how the dark red line has been tracking right along last year's curve, the light red line. Uh, and you can see how in the next few weeks, the price of those in contract will likely be notably lower than last year. This chart also doesn't capture the bidding wars last year, so where the transaction price was, uh, was commonly higher than, than the final list price. Most of the time around the country, there is a very consistent ratio of final asking price to the closed sales price. Any given home may be over or underpriced, uh, but in aggregate, they're very close. And last year, though, due to the, the bidding wars, that final sales price was actually higher generally than, than that final list price. So this tells us that the homes in contract now are actually going to close sales priced lower than last year. Again, you can see it in a, a few of the, the Altos data points that the headlines are going to start reporting year over year price declines. And I'm guessing uh, that next week, the dark red line for the year is actually under the light red line. So the pendings will be closing at a lower price. Uh, my assumption is that we'll see that reliably year over year price declines over the over the next few months. We'll keep hearing that. So what does this mean? Does this home mean home prices are falling? Actually, not necessarily. Home prices can be climbing each week 
and still be lower than last year. So weekly climbing lower year over year. Uh, the, the, remember that, that most of the price declines actually happened late last year. So the price adjustment happened late last year. As of right now, there doesn't seem to be continued price downward pressure. Uh, but the annual comparisons are going to get, be getting worse for a few months because last year the prices were jumping so quickly. So if economic conditions worsen, prices could start falling again like they did in the second half of last year, though. So uh, for the most extreme predictions of home price declines like that, that are out there, folks who expect 20% plus home price declines, we'd have to see that significant economic weakness hit us, which certainly seems possible, though the data doesn't actually, it's not there yet. So on this chart, in that case, you'd see, you'll see first the dark red line below the light red line each week, meaning the, the median price of the home's pending contract would be lower now than last year. Uh, then you'd see it tick down more quickly than it did in the second half of last year. So if those dire scenarios start playing out, this is what we will look for in the pendings price chart. Uh, I do expect price reductions to start ticking up next week. Uh, once April is almost upon us, any of the homes listed in Q1 that didn't get offers yet start taking price cuts. And so price reductions have probably hit their low point for the year at just over 30%. The question is, do they rise on the curve, uh, like on that same curve from last year? So the, the, the light red line here showed really how abruptly the, the demand changed uh, at the, in, in the second quarter last year. Uh, again, if recession and job losses hit hard, you can expect these uh, to, to see it in the price reductions. If we manage a soft economic landing, this curve then stays flatter. A flatter curve here is an indication that home prices are not declining further. So when the February sales data hits the headlines like ne this week, next week, um, it, it's remember that the homes that sold in February were on the market taking price cuts in November and December. And you can see the price reductions line here was so much higher. So we'd expect that for home sales prices to decline from here, we first need to see much weaker demand showing up in the price reductions chart. If the economy drive, drives weaker demand, we'll see the price cuts ticking up rapidly each week. So it's the economy and the financial markets that we need to keep our eyes on. And if you need to know what's happening in your local market as it happens, go to altosresearch.com, book a free consult with our team. We'll help you interpret the crazy market and the data for your clients right now. It can be a critical time to, to be properly informed about the market. So please join us. All right, more next week.